April 8, 1961, Washington, D.C. President John F. Kennedy welcomes two women into the White House. He greets them in the Oval Office. One visitor is an interpreter for the other, who is unable to see or hear the president. She is blind and deaf. Miss Keller's life has made her a symbol of hope and achievement for the handicapped. In her remarkable career, she has met every president since Grover Cleveland. Helen Keller never let her disabilities restrain her from achieving great things. Her list of accomplishments extends beyond what anyone ever imagined. Helen Adams Keller was born here in Alabama in 1880, as healthy as any other child. She started to speak when she was six months old and began to walk when she was one. Then, an unknown illness left her without sight or hearing. She was only 19 months old. During her childhood, Helen could signal some with her family's cook but she was frustrated and would kick and throw tantrums. When Helen was six, her family turned to the Perkins Institute for the Blind in Boston. One teacher, 20-year-old Anne Sullivan, agreed to help Helen better manage her disabilities. Anne temporarily separated Helen from her family so they could focus only on her instruction. Soon enough, a breakthrough. Anne spelled the word water into Helen's hand. At the same time, she ran water over her other hand. Helen suddenly understood. By that night, she had learned 20 words. Helen learned quickly under Anne's tutelage. She studied Braille, how to speak, and how to lip-read by putting her fingers on a person's throat and lips. Helen loved school and learning and desperately wanted to go to college. An oil executive named Henry H. Rogers was so impressed by Helen that he paid for her to attend Radcliffe College. After college, Helen wanted to learn more about the world and help others. She shared her life experiences with people across the globe, fought for women's suffrage and birth control access, and co-founded Helen Keller International to fight the causes of blindness. Helen published 12 books about her life and wrote that the best and most beautiful things in the world cannot be seen or even touched. They must be felt with the heart. She also spoke in 35 countries on five continents on behalf of the American Foundation for the Blind. Helen co-founded the American Civil Liberties Union in 1920 and worked to remove the disabled from asylums and similar institutions. She obtained many honors in her lifetime, including the Presidential Medal of Freedom in 1964. Helen passed away in 1968, a few weeks before her 88th birthday. She remains an inspiring symbol of courage in facing obstacles and is remembered for her immense contribution to improving the lives of others. <laughs>